You're watching WCSD Cable Television from Cowley County High School. Hello, uh, Cowboy Connections. I'm your host, Isaiah Cavett, joined here with my guest, Joseph Oliver. I'm going to be talking bees and uh, stuff like that, so stay tuned. Hello, Cowboy Connections, uh, your host Isaiah Cavett, and uh, joined here with Joseph Oliver. Hello, so, uh, Isaiah. Uh, what motivated you to begin raising bees? Well, I uh, <clears throat> was a couple years ago that you could, they were a lot in the news, you would hear about save the bees and how the bees were endangered and stuff like that, so I wanted to do my part and got a couple, got two hives to get started uh, with the bees, and you know, I just fell in love with it and sit out there and watch them and watch you learn about nature and when flowers are blooming it, it really connects you with nature and it, you know, it really motivated me to keep going with it and try to make a career out of it. So uh, what, why, why are bees so important? Well bees are important because well first off they make honey and we all love honey. It's a good sweetener opposed to I think it's more healthy than sugar personally. Uh, they also are pollinators, which a lot of the food that we have in our grocery stores are directly for one pollinating species of bee or, or another that we have like almonds and just just tons of food that without the bees we would not have. That we would be in a, in a real bad way. So do you feel bees are one of the most important species in our environment? They are definitely an important species in our environment. As, I mean, they tie it all together. With, without bees or, or, or anything like a pollinator species of that, of that sort, it would not be possible for us to have many, many plant species would go extinct because they, re, they, they really rely on these, these bees to, to reproduce, to, be, to get them out there to pollinate the flower to make a seed to continue the life of the flowers. That I mean, so without the bees, our landscape would change dramatically. So. How long have you been working with bees and beehives and just that sort of stuff? Well, three years ago I got my first hives and that really, really grew quick. Uh, I got, they just reproduce so fast, um, like you, you'll find that you almost can't keep equipment to keep the bees because they just reproduce so fast. So, uh, yeah, they, uh, Uh, they can. Um, I don't know. So, uh, why why are bees just so important to the environment to make them one of the best species? Well, like I said, the pollination is important, and uh, just just the food that they produce for us to be able to eat and everything. And but like like I said, probably the ma major thing of bees would be pollination. That's the major major thing on them. So I heard about something called Save the Bees. Like, how? What is up with that? Okay, uh, we had a drop in all bee species five years ago. It just got really bad. Well, it's a combination of things. There's there was a 1970s. A man brought bees from Russia, honeybees from Russia, because. Bees in the winter will, will die when they overwinter if, if they don't have the food stores. And the Russian bees, it's much colder in that area and they're more climatized to that, to that environment. So whenever you bring them to America, they could overwinter and you would not lose your hives as many over the winter. The only problem was there was a little mite on the bees that they brought over called Varroa destructor. And that mite lives off of bees' blood. And once it came here, nobody knew that it was here and it just destroyed tons and t like mil millions and millions of dollars of hives were lost and millions of hives and also it affects the, the the native pollinators so we've brought over diseases from another from other areas into America and it's 
it was really doing a lot of damage. Now we've got treatments that, that to, to help us combat the Varroa destructor, but to this day, there there is no way to stop it. Pretty much, if you have bees in America, you, they, you probably have Varroa destructor on your bees and you're gonna have to treat them every... All right, so uh, I believe we have a couple of photos here. Could you tell us about these? Um, yeah, there you've got a photo of, uh, it's honey. You can see all of those open little uh, hexagons have got honey in it. And then if you look at the very middle, there's uh, what looks kind of like a yellow, like maybe a peanut kind of hanging down there. Mm -hmm. That is called a queen cell. And what that is, is they're going to actually take a larva, which you don't have, there's, there's like a little the egg and the worm that will come out of the queen. And they're going to put one of those in that cup and make a new queen with, with that little like yellow peanut there, mm -hmm. the queen cell. And there's just a, that's just a close up of some bees. We've got capped honey on that one. If you'll look at the very top of the, you'll see how some of the comb is open. You'll see the little hexagons and at the top, you really can't see how they're open. That's capped. That's whenever they have that honey like that, they put as much as they can in there. When you got a whole board that's capped like that, then you'll be able to go ahead and harvest it. Yeah, that's the, that's the picture we saw earlier. Oh, okay, now this is capped, like the honey, but it's a little more darker yellow. That's all new bees. So I think you can even see a couple of their little heads coming out there on some of it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome, Queen. <laughs> and again, more, uh, more of their cap, more of their, more of their hexagons, and uh, you just got some honey in that one there. So, uh, what would you, uh, what do you recommend, and how would you begin to start beekeeping and things like that? Well, if you want to start beekeeping, you should probably find a mentor or someone to learn from. Now, there's a man on the internet. If you're unable to find a man locally or in your area to mentor you, then I would suggest going onto YouTube and looking up a man called Fat Bee Man, and he's He's like the teacher. He's how I've learned a lot of the stuff I know is, is by that man there. Um, how, how do the bees reproduce? Like, how, like, what gender are they? Like, how would they make another queen and make more bees? Okay. Yeah, um, well, for the most part, every bee, just about every bee you're going to see is a female. And that doesn't mean they're going to make LA eggs and reproduce. They're just, all the workers are female. And the queen is female as well, and that, we'll get into that, but there's male bees are drones, and it's what they're called, they're just male bees, they don't collect honey, they don't help necessarily in any way, they kind of just get taken care of by the girls until it's time for them to go and mate. And then, uh, so whenever they have like the queen cell that we've seen earlier, the little yellow peanut, eventually that will hatch a virgin queen that has not been mated. That queen will f take off on what they call a, a breeding flight or a mating flight, and the drone bees will actually reproduce with them in midair, and then their sexual organ will explode, and then the drone bees will all die. So it's a dismal existence up until, I mean, they, they live a good life until the very end, and well, then they die <laughs> reproducing. <laughs> so uh, I heard there is a difference in honeybees and Native bees, like yeah. Native well, natural bees. before uh, honeybees are not a native species of America. Say so a lot of a lot of people that I know think that honeybees have been around and the bears have been eating their honey since forever, since Indians. But actually, it wasn't until around the 1800s uh, that they started actually getting honeybees from Europe into the Americas, and so. You know, that's the honeybee that everyone thinks of. Native pollinators, if you're out in your yard looking around, you'll see big carpenter bees or bumblebees or there's even many, many smaller types of bees. And these are the native pollinators that are so important as they, they pollinate plants that the honeybees just don't pollinate. So whenever they're saying save the bees, we definitely need to include the native pollinators in that discussion. All right. So, uh... Do you have any, like, contact info in case people see, like, swarms of bees? Oh, yes. And, like, 
And what would you do if you see a swarm of bees and stuff like that? All right, right now swarm season, so you're you may find a bit like that there exactly. Uh, it'll just look like a big wad of bees, and uh, you know hypothetically you can get close to them and they're not gonna uh, attack you. I would definitely put something over your eyes just to be safe. But uh, if you do see a swarm, if you can contact me, you can call two seven zero seven zero five. Uh, 6919 and uh, or you can call 270-727-9959 if you see any swarms or if you want to get in contact with me about any honey or anything then that's that'll be my contact information. A uh, quick question here before we end this. What is this? Oh, this is how you protect yourself. It's a bee veil. You just throw it on like so and it will kind of keep it down over you here lies it up you can actually bring these over and strap them up underneath you to really get it on here but just to make sure like that so you kind of it ain't coming off nothing can get up under, under here it, it's got like elastic on your neck so this is really gonna this is really gonna make it possible for you to get in there and now I would honestly if you're a beginner beekeeper I would get a suit they make a suit that you can put on that'll that'll cover your entire body I, I don't know, I've just got, I, don't, I just don't care to get stung anymore. <laughs> and it's getting so hot, those suits are real hot too, so you just kind of got to choose. All right. So uh, I believe that is all the time we have. And this has been Isaiah Cabot with my guest, Joseph Oliver, on Calorie Connections.